push aside the embarrassment factor to this, I wanted to share what I recently discovered after quite a bit of digging to get some answers about a particular phenomenon that occurs in our sleep, which truthfully I only happened to stumble upon by chance due to a particular chain of events that started with one of my beloved family members deciding to take it upon themselves to record this bizarre thing they had been telling me that I was doing on a rather regular basis while dead asleep. To which my initial response after watching was to put in my request that they please delete this disturbing video immediately and that they had my full permission to never tape that freaky shit ever again. And I had full intentions to try to pretend as if I had never seen that video for as long as I live. Because I'm not going to lie, as natural and necessary as sleeping is, and nothing really weird about seeing others sleep, but let me tell you, there ain't nothing normal, natural, or settling about watching yourself sleep, especially when you go ahead and top that off, stir into the already eerie mix. This bizarre sleeping ritual of sorts comes off as if you might possibly be possessed or like something perhaps is taking you over. Something you have never seen anyone do anything remotely close to it as long as you've lived. Something that after watching with my very own eyes became quite apparent that this wasn't due to some random or coincidental moving, jerking, spasm or stretching as it was far too rhythmic and went on for far longer than I had envisioned through their tails. But naturally, they didn't delete it. And well, much to my dismay, I could not unsee that shit, largely because I had no way of explaining it. So to put my mind at ease that I wasn't possessed or this wasn't in relation to some underlying issue that I needed to be in grave concern for, I started doing some digging to try to find some kind of answers to this late night freak show spectacular that I was putting on without having any recognition of whatsoever. What I ended up finding that shocked me the most was one, why in the world was this not being talked about, discussed, or mentioned at all, especially how it ties in to one of the biggest symptoms of CPTSD, and two, how it changed my perspective about the aftermath of narcissistic abuse and healing from trauma tenfold, but in a positive direction. And well, what survivor of narcissistic abuse couldn't use a little more inspiring or upbeat information. So without further ado, this is what I ended up discovering. One of the main symptoms of CBTSD that many survivors of narcissistic abuse develop due to the prolonged repetitive nature of the abuse is reoccurring nightmares. But these nightmares aren't just a typical kind of nightmare, but are subconscious reenactments and flashbacks of events and situations that actually took place during the abuse. Nightmares that seem so legitimately real as if to be reliving the experience all over again that they jolt you awake from a dead sleep, sitting there in a pool of your own sweat, mind racing, heart pounding, scanning every inch of the room, riddled in fear that that demonic fucker is going to pop their head up and be all like, here's Johnny, as you wait for your eyes to adjust to the darkness and then thanking the stars and the good Lord above that it was just another flashback. Despite the fact that your body is still trembling from the panic and anxiety of rehashing one of the worst experiences of your life. And no matter how hard the exhaustion tugs at your eyelids, there ain't a snowball's chance in hell you're gonna just go ahead and close your eyes and drift back off into the land of sleep as these nightmares of the living nightmare that you could never wake up from now make it too scary to want to willingly go to sleep. Some experiencing these horrific flashbacks every time they close their eyes. And though the intensity of these nightmares remains the same throughout in time, they do start to dissipate as far as their frequency due to our subconscious, making it damn near impossible just to sweep these emotions under the rug that come to surface from reliving these terrifying experiences, as well as often gets replaced by another little bizarre trick on behalf of our subconscious. A common behavior 
by those who have endured narcissistic abuse and experienced nightmares in result of PTSD or extreme trauma, a phenomenon that takes place literally for our subconscious mind trying to self-soothe. In many instances of these documented cases, it was reported by those that subconsciously rub or stroke their arm amidst their sleep that as a young child, their parent would rub their arm in effort to soothe them when they were frightened having had a nightmare. And this too, for me, was just the very thing that my mom would do when I was upset, had a nightmare, and she was trying to get me back to sleep. Something that I so vividly remember her doing and truly found soothing that it became my go-to to soothe my own kids when they were frightened or having trouble going back to sleep. Though I do still find the way that our brain goes about dealing with trauma after experiencing what these demonic bot flies deliberately bestow unto others is every bit of being ironically bizarre. But now after what by chance and almost tried to completely dismiss it seemed too disturbing and freakish, ended up changing my perspective in what truly felt kind of like a big old fuck you in the way that our brain goes about dealing with the aftermath, not only a little less fuck you-ish, but well, in all honesty, might actually be more along the lines of just some bizarre little way of our subconscious having our own backs pushing us to consciously face the things that we've been repressing. Not in a way so that we remain in auto replay, rehashing all of the pain, or like it's handing us a shovel to go ahead and dig ourselves a hole so we can stay tucked away in to avoid getting hurt. Because well, there ain't no way in our ever being able, let alone wanting to trust anyone or let down our guard, because we have learned the hard way that monsters do exist in human form, hiding in plain sight. But more in way, of a reminder as to what made these monsters in the first place. And then realizing that this evil can only hide in plain sight if nobody knows that it's there and is in the knowing what you're looking for, be able to eventually see not only those whose intentions are pure evil, but as well as those whose intentions are simply pure. And though, yes, there are plenty of lessons that one learns about life and about themselves in the harshest way possible as a result of what these creatures put one through. But by no means did the narcissist personally come into your life so that they themselves could teach you some kind of valuable life lesson, nor did you attract them in order to learn or adjust the things about you that you needed adjusting, because it doesn't matter if you have unhealed wounds from your past, if you're vulnerable due to a recent loss, or if you are the most internally attuned person with more confidence than Popeye the Sailor Man does strength after eating 10 cans of spinach. These demonic clowns will try to manipulate you like a twister game. They see what a speck of possibility of being able to provoke you to behave in the way to which they desire, whether we want to believe it or not. And really doesn't matter what type of person went in to their haunted house of horrors. What ends up coming out is all the same and why there are so many commonalities and similarities in behaviors of the ways that those who endure narcissistic abuse exhibit, not because they are a reflection of who you are or who you once were before you met the narcissist, but rather get developed as a way to survive being on the never ending roller coaster ride straight out of hell due to the narcissist chipping away at your self esteem, depleting your confidence, and erasing the very essence of the person that you once were from having lost part of your heart from the realization that you were in love with a ghost and soul being shattered from the relentless, twisted nature of what truly lies beneath the surface of the narcissist bullshit facades and distorting your perception and reality, isolating you from the outside world, eliminating any other form of support, leaving you 
lost, alone, and helpless. So you have no other choice but to stay stuck, dependent upon them and tolerating their abuse just so they can live in their delusional world, feeling more powerful than thou because they're too much of a coward to face who they really are. And that right there is the very thing that our subconscious is trying to prevent us from doing. And I truly believe that you can heal completely from this type of abuse. And it all starts with accepting the reality of all of it and remembering who you are. So take the risk, take a chance on you, on getting back the life that you were born to live and you undoubtedly deserve. Fight for you, focus on you, fuck the narcissist.